I'm on a quest to make an extra sour loaf of sourdough bread, and this week I'm trying to find out if overproofing my sourdough bread on purpose will make it taste extra sour. Does pushing the proofing time to the limit equal more sourness? Let's find out. I'm gonna proof this bread much longer than I normally do during three stages of the bread baking process. I'm gonna let the starter rise for a long time, I'm gonna let the dough bulk ferment for a long time, and it's gonna have a long final proof. To kick things off, this starter has risen for a full 12 hours, which is much longer than the normal six to eight hours that I normally do. The starter is definitely past its peak and it's been falling down for a number of hours. That has hopefully increased the acidity in the starter. Now to mix the dough and prepare for a long bulk fermentation. After adding 325 grams of water to a mixing bowl, I added 100 grams of this extra fermented sourdough starter, then 10 grams of salt, and I gave everything a mix with my dough whisk here just to dissolve the starter and salt into the water. Then I added 450 grams of bread flour to the mixing bowl, and I brought everything together with the dough whisk until it formed a shaggy and rough dough. A few months ago, I talked about nine sourdough tools that I use all the time, and this dough whisk was not on my list. But a lot of you told me you love to use a dough whisk, so I got one of these handy tools again, it's back in my kitchen, and I'm using it for sourdough bread, but I'm also using it almost every weekend for pancake and waffle batter. It comes in really handy for that, and I could tell this would be really useful for any kind of wet dough. If you're interested in getting one of these dough whisks, go ahead and go to the link that I'm showing on the screen right now. The sponsor of today's video, Cooey Housewares, is offering you 10% off a dough whisk on their website. Go check them out at cooeyhousewares.com and use the code GRANTBAKES10 for 10% off. After bringing the dough together and letting it rest for 30 minutes, I gave the dough three sets of stretches and folds with a half hour rest in between each set. After the third set of folds, when the dough had enough gluten development, I covered the dough up with an airtight seal and let it rest on the counter at room temperature for a full 12 hours. This is much longer than my normal bulk fermentation, and by the end of the 12 hours, the dough had significantly risen and it was jiggly, puffy, and ready to shape. The dough has had two long rise times so far, which are hopefully building sour flavor within the dough, the long rise of the starter and the extra long bulk fermentation. My goal with this loaf is to give it one more long final proof before baking it. So I pre-shaped the dough into a ball and let it rest on the counter for 30 minutes. Then I shaped the dough into a batard or an oval shaped loaf using my normal shaping technique. And then I carefully transferred the dough upside down into a rice floured banneton basket. When I do a room temperature final proof, I usually let the dough rise for an hour and a half to two hours. But for this loaf, I let it rise for a full four hours until it was absolutely busting out of the banneton basket and doming over the top. So the dough has now had a full 12 hours of rise time for the starter, 12 hours of bulk fermentation, and four hours of additional final proofing time. I'm really hoping for an extra sour loaf here. Hopefully we crack the code. Since the dough is risen significantly already, I don't want to give it my usual scoring method with one long slash. So I'm just giving it a bunch of little tiny scores on top of the loaf. So it just kind of rises a little bit in the oven. Got this method from Bake With Jack, I believe. He calls it his tactical scoring or tactical slashing technique for scoring an overproof loaf. So I put this loaf into the oven at 450 degrees Fahrenheit and baked it for 20 minutes with the lid on. And to my surprise, it actually got a nice ear on the loaf, even though I did the tactical slashing. Unintentional, but it looked pretty cool. So I put this back in the oven uncovered and kept baking it for another 15 minutes at 450 degrees Fahrenheit. And it came out looking like this nice and golden brown. So I let it rest on the counter for a couple of hours before slicing in and going in for the taste test. Visually, the loaf looked really well fermented on the inside and had a closed, more compact crumb. But what I was looking for here was the flavor. Would this long, meticulously, almost overproofed loaf of bread have a more sour flavor? No, the flavor was not extra sour like I was hoping for. This was a mildly tangy loaf, very similar to the ones I make all the time. Once again, my quest for an extra sour loaf of sourdough bread had unsatisfactory results, so I started over. I fed my sourdough starter and let it rise for a full 12 hours again until it started falling back down. Then I mixed the same exact dough as for the first loaf. My goal with the second test was to create the exact same long fermented loaf of sourdough bread, same proofing times as the first one, but I would extend the final proof in the fridge for a full 48 hours of cold fermentation. 
So I let the starter rise for 12 hours. Then I made the same dough, let the dough bulk ferment for another 12 hours. It got nice and jiggly, just like the first one. Then I moved on to the shaping step, pre-shaped the dough into a ball, let it rest for 30 minutes after that. Then I shaped it into an oval-shaped batard, put it in the banditon basket, and let it rise for four hours at room temperature. That produced another extremely puffy loaf that looked the exact same as the first loaf. Then here's where the experiment changed a little bit. I covered it up with the banneton basket liner, forget this towel for a second, I actually switched what I was covering it with, and I put the dough in the fridge and I kept it there for a full 48 hours. I wanted to extend the cold proof as long as I thought I could, probably could go even longer, but I decided to stop it at 48 hours. That brings us to today, the day that I'm recording this voiceover and the day that I baked this extra long fermented, some could say overproofed loaf of sourdough bread. Will overproofing actually lead to an extra sour loaf? Let's find out. As you can see, I transferred the loaf very gently into the already preheated Dutch oven. I didn't want to deflate what essentially felt like a balloon that was about ready to pop. Then I scored the loaf very lightly on top with some more tactical slashes, covered it up, and baked this for 20 minutes at 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Then 20 minutes later, took the lid off and revealed the oven spring. There wasn't any huge spring or a big ear formed like on the first loaf, but the loaf didn't collapse or deflate, which is sometimes the worry with overproofed loaves like these. Back in the oven for another 15 minutes at 450 degrees Fahrenheit, and the loaf came out golden brown like this. So I transferred it to a wire rack to cool for one hour before the big taste test. I was very excited for this particular taste test because it feels like I've been on this quest for an extra sour loaf of sourdough bread for a while now. And I was pretty sure that this exaggerated amount of fermentation time was gonna produce good results. As you can see, the crumb was closed yet very well fermented. Nothing weird going on there. Now for the flavor. While nothing can quite compare to the slightly unnaturally acidic flavor of adding citric acid to sourdough bread, which I did in the last video, the flavor of this particular sourdough bread was notably sour. I noticed the sourness right away on the tip of my tongue, and not only that, the sourdough bread had a slightly acidic aftertaste that kind of hung around for a few seconds. That's the best way I can describe it. So overproofing definitely worked. At least the long cold fermentation in the fridge during the final proof produced an extra sour result that I was happy with. Now the question is, how can we harness this technique and create a formula and recipe for extra sour sourdough bread that gives consistent results every time? That's what I'll be covering in a video coming up very soon. So grab a dough whisk from Cooey Housewares at 10% off with my discount code GrantBakes10, and I'll see you in the next video.